with a lot of stuffing and gravy, everyone will get a taste. <laughs> That's one turkey? One bank, one turkey. I'll have it delivered to your apartment today. I am supposed to cook it and serve 65 people in my tiny apartment. How cheap can you get? Cheap? I ought to buy two raffle tickets to win that turkey. Will you be there? No, it, it always puts a damper on the party when the boss is there. Everyone feels he has to be nice to me. I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> Howdy, Miss Jane. Granny, Mr. Clampett, what a pleasant surprise. Looky here, Miss Jane. Oh, what a darling baby. <laughs> That's Betty Joe and Steve Elliott's baby that I took care of back in Petticoat Junction. Mm -hmm. Granny is so proud of that young and she's talked the whole family and going back to Hooterville to see it. We want to ask Mr. Drysdale to keep an eye on our place whilst we's gone. Howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Howdy. Granny, Mr. Clampett, happy Thanksgiving. Same to you. You want to see some photographs of the cutest little darling you ever did see? Oh, I certainly do. When did you have your picture taken? <laughs> These ain't pictures of me. Oh, and I wanted one for my wallet. <laughs> That's a little baby I took care of. Oh, it's beautiful. Granny's so proud of it, she feels like it's her own. It looks just like your Granny. The same sweet, soft, warm, angelic expression. You noticed it, did you? <laughs> Say, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open a savings account for that baby. Oh, I done open one, Mr. Drysdale. Well, bless you, Granny. Well, I'll go down and add this to the account right now. Oh, I'll do it. It's at the First National Bank in Hooterville. Who, 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 Hooterville? <laughs> That's where the baby lives. We's all going down there and see him. Will you keep an eye on our place over Thanksgiving? Well, Granny, I think he'll run longer than that. According to Granny, Hooterville is a mighty fine little town. Cutest little general story ever did see. Truth is, Granny's took a shine to the storekeeper, Sam Drucker. <laughs> he ain't only the storekeeper. He's the postmaster, the justice of the peace, the newspaper publisher, and banker. <laughs> a banker? <laughs> Yeah, that's where Granny opened up the savings account for the baby. He keeps his money in his post office. That way, it's protected by the United States government. Sound like a mighty smart fella. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Hathaway. Good morning, Mrs. Drysdale. Bonjour, Claude. Claude and I are going to Boston. We've come to say goodbye to our daddy. At the moment, daddy is talking with Granny and Mr. Clampett. <laughs> now, Claude, I feel the same way you do about those peasants. But we must remember, it's Thanksgiving. I'll uh, tell Mr. Drysdale you're here. <laughs> Excuse me, Chief. Oh, Miss Hathaway, please tell these lovely people why they can't go to Hooterville. Well, I, uh, y your wife is... That's it, my, my wife. She's planned a magnificent Thanksgiving feast for you people. Jeez. Well, I, I know it's supposed to be a surprise, but I, I just have to tell them. It's a surprise, all right. Yeah. In the seven years that we've been neighbors, she ain't hardly spoke a civil word to us. And she's making up for it with this one supreme gesture of hospitality. Chief, your wife... Has been shopping for weeks, sparing no expense to make this an exact replica of the first Thanksgiving dinner in New England. Oh, it's going to be a real love feast. I'm sorry, Milburn, but Claude and I have to catch a plane to Boston. How do you like that? She's going all the way to Boston to personally select the oysters for the dressing. <laughs> Margaret, you're a fussy shopper, but I love you. Goodbye. I'll be back in two weeks. Two weeks? She is a fussy shopper. Um, let go of me. It's my day. You forgot this, whatever it is. John, come to mother. If you ain't coming back for two weeks, I think we'll go to Hooterville. As far as I'm concerned, you can go to Hooterville. <laughs> Goodbye, Claude. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> How about me forgetting that Margaret's family celebrate Thanksgiving two weeks later than other people? Well, I'll just get my pictures and say goodbye to Miss Jane, and then we'll be on our way to see the baby. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Where's them shakers that wants me to drive them to Hooterville? You're not going to do it, are you, Jethro? You'd be bored to death in a little one-horse town like that. 
Are you kidding, sweetie? Did Granny show you a picture of them chicks that lives at the Shady Rest Hotel? Well, no, but... Them corn-fed cuties ain't never seen a big Hollywood producer director like me. I'm gonna fetch them back and put them in movies. But those country girls won't have any talent. Baby, with me, they don't need it. I'm a star maker. <laughs> Oh, really? Gee, and I don't have a key. What are we going to do? I guess you'll just have to stay here. Stand aside, Jed. Sorry about the door, Mr. Drysdale. But when Granny's ready to go, she's ready to go. <laughs> Luggage. They're never coming back. Oh, gee, quick, throw yourself in front of the truck. <laughs> well, not. Better I won't run over you. He likes you. That won't stop Granny. As Mr. Clampett says, when she's ready to go, she's ready to you go. You have nothing to worry about. You have a big insurance policy with the company. No. Don't be so selfish. Think of your beneficiary. I want to make you my beneficiary. <laughs> I won't keep a penny. It'll all go for flowers. A memorial plaque. A choice lot. You'll have the best of everything. She's got a hold of yourself. You're losing your mind. Say, that will get us both off the hook. I'll throw you in front of the truck and plead insanity. We are going back to the bank. What bank? There won't be any bank if they leave. That is your problem. Chicken. Sunshine patriot. Fake anarchist. All right. I'll stop them alone. <laughs> medicine for the baby. I put lots of wolf bane in it. Wolf bane? Every full of the moon. The little fella sprouts fangs and hair and goes to howl. Is that all you're going to tell me? It's too technical for a layman to understand. Even us doctors only can watch and hope. We've got to be ready for measles or mange. <laughs> What are you doing, Jethro? Oh, Miss Jane said some vandals stripped our truck. <laughs> so, she's gonna let us drive her car to Hooterville. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't let nothing stop me from seeing that baby. I know. Let's hit the road, lovers. <laughs> Wanna come along, Miss Jane? Oh, I'm afraid I can't. Well, I hope you ain't gonna be spending Thanksgiving alone. No, I'm not. <laughs> we do appreciate it, Miss Jane. Gives me real class. My pleasure, Jethro. You know, a handsome Hollywood producer can't be seen driving an old wreck through town. You're right. Quick as I get to Hooterville, I'll have her duck down out of sight. <laughs> Go fool around with Melvin Drysdale. <laughs> Let's see him get to Hooterville now, eh? Let's see him get there. <laughs> Follow Mr. Drysdale. Get it. He's off to Hootersville. Hope you find some fish and water. No, no. <laughs> what are you doing, Keith? Oh, you traitor. Help start putting that truck back together. Poor. It's the only way of catching him. Margaret's got my car. Sorry, Chief. I have to get my Thanksgiving turkey cooked. You help me or your goose is cooked. <laughs> Mr. Drucker! What do you want, Ed? I just heard there's a big Hollywood producer coming to town. Oh, yeah, Mr. Jethro Bodine. He phoned me from Pixley, wants me to line up some talent for him to look at. I'm your man. Mrs. Douglas says from this side, I look like Rock Hudson. <laughs> He's looking for girls. That's all right. From this side, I look like Shirley Temple. <laughs> Ab, I'm busy. I'm trying to get out an extra on this. Producer hits sticks chicks for flicks. <laughs> Boy, that's a great headline. Thanks. What does it mean? 
Well, it's showbiz talk, Ab. It means this producer is looking for country girls for his pictures. Is Shirley Temple a country girl? No. That lets me out. <laughs> Ab, I'm trying to get out this extra for Thanksgiving. You want to buy something? No, but I'd like to put some money in your bank. Oh, okay. Uh, do you pay interest? Sure, 4%. In that case, I'll deposit my whole week's salary. There you are. A dollar and a half? Yeah, I got a raise. That ought to make you happy. No, it puts me in too high a bracket. There's your deposit receipt, Ab. Thank you. Uh, now I'd like to draw out 50 cents. <laughs> Why didn't you just keep the 50 cents? And lose all that interest? <laughs> Here you are, Ab. Help yourself. Just put the bank away when you're through. Thank you, Mr. Drucker. Boy, this is the first time I ever opened a bank vault. Well, don't get locked in. <laughs> I bet you're that big Hollywood producer. That's right, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Oh, you're looking at my Shirley Temple side. <laughs> now, who am I? Sam Drucker? That's close. Try again. <laughs> who are you? Rock Hudson. You wouldn't pull my leg, would you? I would if you'd let me help you line up that talent. How about it? You got any dolls? No, sir. You're looking at my Shirley Temple side again. <laughs> who are you talking to out here, Ed? Oh, you must be Mr. Bodine, a big Hollywood producer-director. Hey, just call me Star Maker. <laughs> well, it's a great honor and pleasure to meet you. Same here, sweetheart. Same here. Hey, Mr. Drucker, you got a Shirley Temple side, too. <laughs> yeah, I got a bunch of Hollywood flunkies around to light my cigars and such, you know? Can I be your flunky? I got matches. Yeah, maybe. No, why don't you go on outside and keep your eye on the hubcaps of that red convertible? I had one car stripped today. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Bodine. Yes, sir. <laughs> Where's the rest of your party, Mr. Bodine? Uh, Mr. Starmaker. I dropped them off at the Shady Rest Hotel. Oh, did you see the Bradley girls? No, I missed them. They's on their way in here now. You reckon they's moving material? They're awful photogenic. Well, we can cover that with makeup. <laughs> Is this your car? No, Billy Joe. It belongs to my boss. Gee, it's a beauty. Watch out now. Don't touch the hubcaps. I didn't know Mr. Douglas had a new car. Oh, I don't work for him no more. I'm a Hollywood flunky now. Oh, really? Yeah, I work for a big Hollywood producer. They call him the Star Maker. Can we meet him? Sure, he's in Drucker's store. Just mention my name. He thinks I look like Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple? Well, come on, Bobby Joe, we've got it made. <laughs> Today. That turkey is looking real good. I hope Billy and Bobby hurries home with the trimmings. Jethro said he'd fetch him in the car. I'll have Ellie come in setting the table. You're awful cute. I reckon you're just about the cutest fella I ever did see. <laughs> My prayers is answered. Sounds like she's found a boy, all right. How about if I help you run this hotel? It's Uncle Joe. He's out in the kitchen. Oh, that's right. I like you. I'm gonna give you a great big hug. <laughs> I want a kiss. At least doing her part. That's real sweet. I'd like to take you home with me. Go, Ellie, go. Here, let me brush the hair out of your eyes so you can see. Brush the hair out of his eyes? Must be a hippie. <laughs> You know something? I think maybe you got flea. Okay, he's a hippie, all right. Now, how bad can a hooter little hippie be? Don't you worry, darling. I'll get into my old clothes and give you a bath. <laughs> Not before the wedding, you don't. And this granny, as her paw, it's my place. <laughs> hey, granny, turkey's done. In fact, it's the tender this piece of white meat fell right off my hand. <laughs> Kitchen, you turkey buzzard. Darned if you ain't as bad as Jethro. 
Oh, so that's who you was talking to. Yes, sir, Paul. Ain't he cute? Well, he ain't exactly the way I picture him, but he's cute, all right. I'll go get him his back. Oh, uh, Ellie Mae, uh, company will be here any minute. Leave your pretty dress on. Uh, you're liable to sit at the table next to a good-looking young single fella. Right, Mr. Carson? Mr. Clampett, I'll be honest with you. Single, yes. Good-looking, yes. But I'm crowding middle age. <laughs> Run along, Ellie. <laughs> and so I says to Carrie Grant, I says, listen, Carrie, baby, there's only room for one boss on this set, and that's me. I made you, and I can break you. <laughs> We're here, star maker. So we are. I told the groceries in for these here stars at Tamari. I ain't their flunky. I'm your flunky. Hey, listen, kid, you want to come back to Hollywood with me? Yes, sir. Then start flunking. Yes, sir. Mr. Bodine, have you ever created stars out of complete unknowns like us? Have I? Oh, tell us who some of them are. Well, there's been so many. Wow, who's the blonde bombshell? You like her looks? Oh, she's a knockout. She's my latest creation. Took her from little old here, Billy Gal, and worked my magic on her. <laughs> wow. Who's she? She's the latest addition to my stable. Boy, and Mr. Douglas ain't got anything like that in his barn. Yeah, she's a movie star. Mr. Bodie's latest creation. Howdy, Jethro. Who's all these folks? Oh, uh, Billy Joe and Bobby Joe Bradley. This here's Ellie Mae. Hi. Hi. Pleased to meet you. Oh, and this here's my flunky. Oh, howdy. Can I be your flunky? Well, you can if you want. So long, star maker. Hey, just a minute. Would you like to go down to the pond and skip rocks? That's your look. What's your name? Take your pick. On this side, I'm Rock. <laughs> on this side, I'm Shirley. <laughs> and straight on, I'm Ev. Well, I like Ev. <laughs> I'm blacklisting the both of you. You're through in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, me. That's the heartbreak of this business. I laid the world at her feet, and she done stepped on my fingers. <laughs> Shame. Well, there's your chance. I need somebody to fill her shoes. But there are two of us. That's all right. She got big feet. <laughs> Jethro, get them groceries to the kitchen. The train's coming in with all the people. Careful, Granny. You're talking to a star maker. You get a move on or I'll make stars for you. <laughs> There's another one that's going to be blacklisted. <laughs> Is she in the movies? Not anymore, she ain't. I was going to make a picture with her, called Tugboat Granny. But she done asked the wrong producer. Well, hello, young mama and papa. Hi, Granny. Happy Thanksgiving, Granny. Oh, thank you, and the same to you. Well, I got to see my baby. Oh, what a darling. Did you get the pictures we sent? Honey, they is the talk of Beverly Hills. Everybody thinks the baby looks just like me. <laughs> the same angelic expression. That's it. <laughs> oh, 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 you run along now. I see Ellie coming with her new bow. Okay. <laughs> Granny, this here's Ab. Howdy, Granny. Hello, sweetheart. I gotta stop showing my Shirley Temple side. <laughs> I see you got the hair out of his eyes. What? Where are you two been? Oh, down to the pond. <laughs> Didn't your pa stop you? No, mate. Then you got to get married straight off. That suits me. Boy, I like these fast Hollywood romances. Granny. Oh, run along now. I see my boat coming. Hello, Granny. Hello, Sam. Brought you some red hots. Oh, and I'm gonna have some right now. They make my lips red and rosy. What a beautiful girl. I ain't even done my lips yet. 